Good morning. J.T. Thomas here, the rector of Emmanuel Church in Greenwood, Virginia, coming to you this morning, this Palm Sunday morning, at the beginning of a Holy Week like one we've never experienced. And while we're distant and far flung, we are still together in the worship of God, at least in this time. Today we think about Jesus entering Jerusalem. He comes in riding on a donkey and they send for it. And then they chop down leaves and beautiful branches from trees, palm trees around there, but it could be dogwoods or anything else that's blooming. And they put him in his path because they hail him as David's anointed son. They say, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We say it every week at our Eucharistic feast. And it's true. He does come in the name of the Lord, and we do praise God for his entrance. But what the people expect in Jerusalem is very different from what actually happens. They think that he will come in as a military ruler, a political star, a force that will remove the structures of Roman occupation and overly pious religious elites. They have seen Jesus at work and they're very excited. But he does not deliver exactly what they expect. And as the drama of Holy Week unfolds, we see that the people, the crowds, the government, and the religious officials conspire to turn against him and have his voice eliminated. It's a stark reality that we face, staring down the death of God. But we know it has another ending. Like many of you, I have been trying to occupy myself with exercise in the outdoors to stay appropriately distanced from folks. Part of what we like to do anyway is walk our dogs, Calvin and Gus, to slobbery golden retrievers who love water. So we walk around the lake near our house and we walk up around streams and they run in and out and just love life. It is a joy to watch. Last week we went on a hike up Stony Creek towards Shemokin Falls and it was a beautiful stream winding down from the heights of the the falls all the way through to the valley with big waterfalls and small rivulets and little eddies and pools. There are trout in there and there were a few fishermen out. My fascination with water began as a young child. When I was little, my my brother and I would run outside in the midst of a rainstorm and race sticks down the gutters of the street all the way to the end of the street where the drain took them. And we would watch the power of that water move Uh, piles of brush and leaves and such, but we would race our sticks and evaluate their performance. As I grew up, as some of you know, I became a whitewater kayaker and raft guide and learned very quickly the power of water. We were taught to control our boats in a way that worked with the river, with its power, going with the deep flows finding the channels, avoiding the rocks, finding the the gentle eddies where we could stop and rest. I loved that work. I still love water in all forms, whether it's moving down a stream or moving across to the beach. As I think about Jesus in this moment, I think about what he has said about himself as living water. We talk about Jesus as living water because it's water in motion, not just still pools, but water that moves, water that flows, water that shapes, water that responds to the surroundings around it. And when I think of Jesus as that living water, I think of him as powerful beyond measure, that he is the love of God flowing into the world. We use the baptismal water 
uh, to initiate ourselves into the faith for good reason, to remember that we are washed in the, in the, in the love of God and that we are born with him into the earth as, uh, as new creations that water makes possible. So I think of Jesus, especially during Holy Week, as the power of water and about the metaphor of what happens. It seems that the things that are in control of this river are the boulders, the boulders which are the power of the Roman government, the power of the religious elites, the power of the mob, all things that stand in his way as he moves toward them and they turn on him and arrest him and try him and eventually crucify him. It then looks like the boulders have broken the water. But what we know is in reality, over time and with persistence, the great water that flows through the earth shapes everything underground and above ground. If you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, you see the power of what water has done in one landscape. It has done it to every landscape we experience. Where we live, we see rivers and streams and things coming out of our mountains and forming the valleys. And we see from big rocks to little pebbles to sand how the process of this water takes control. And so as we think about Jesus going to the cross, it's a good metaphor for us to see him as the living water flowing into our lives, but also as the power of the water. Because we know in time that it is not the water that responds to the boulder, but the boulder that gets worn down by the water. And so it is with the love of God that powerful force that shapes and grows and forms the world and forms us. So as we begin Holy Week, may we be aware of that great oceanic power of God's love and may we be aware of our role in helping bring that about. Thank you for your prayers, for your care for each other. Be careful, wash your hands, love one another, go easy on yourself, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.